Yeah. Wow. What a trip. Okay, so yeah. let's go back to um, so you, you purchasing your first snake, which was a male, led led to what next step? Like, what 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 was the next step after that? Is what I'm curious. Yeah, so I purchased that. I really loved it. The thing was massive. It was like a thousand one hundred grams. Like it right. was just a beast. Wow. I was like, you know, I, I really I really love these guys. Maybe just one more. Like, and it didn't really matter, male or female, because I did not want to breed. Like, I I just didn't have that intention. And I saw another Craigslist ad, and this is where it gets kind of funny. It was for a biak, a female biak, and it turned out to have, or it was a male biak, sorry, but I, when I asked the dude, it turns out he had a female, and I was like, yeah, like it would be nice to have that option. So I asked him about it, and the female was much nicer. It was a red neo, but he told me it was, it had a lot of problems. It had regurgitated like nine or ten times just under his care. He was keeping it. Oh, can you he, can he hear me? Oh, you can, okay. Yeah. I think I might've accidentally. Clicked. No, no, I'm, I'm lighting my dad, bro. You're good. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was saying that, it, yeah, it had regurgitated with him like eight, nine times. He had it kept in his garage and he lived in the hotter parts of LA and it probably got like over a hundred degrees at, you know, even at nighttime in, there, in the place he was keeping it in winter, it probably got below like 50. Like it was just, Really horrible conditions, like the thinnest type of plastic, like that, like tub that you could possibly find substrate. There was like absolutely no hydration, like whatsoever in this female, like she had stuck shed everywhere. She was a wreck and like a complete wreck. But for some reason I fell in love with that look. Like she was just vicious looking, the orange eyes, like even as a four year old, you know, you guys, obviously, if you're real into chondros, you like Biak because everybody who likes chondros, they love Biaks. Like, you know the value of them. Yeah, so I, I took her in despite pretty much everyone telling me, like, kind of, you're an idiot. Like, it's going to die on you. Like, chondros are already difficult enough as it is, and you're getting in over your head. It's only been, like, a couple months that you've had one. Like, and I guess going back, I, I would have – advise myself the same thing don't do it but i did it and it worked out i got advice <laughs> uh, from harlan wall actually uh how to treat it and, yeah i added a little bit of my own to that uh aside from what the vet told me as well because my vet had no experience with the green tree pythons i had to tell her everything that i wanted to do on the snake like she even told me there was no paris there were no parasites in the fecals when we know for a fact there were so yeah I, Within a few weeks, she was already eating again under my care and not regurgitating anymore. And and she just started picking up all the weight that she had lost. She was four years old and only 447 grams. So for a, a Biak, fresh, imp like fresh import, because I'm pretty sure she was imported as a Neo, that's very small. But e even by any standard, really, like it, it's, it's small, like, yeah, but really quickly she started gaining weight and now she's the mother of the Womania clutch I just hatched out this year. Gave me 17 bomb ass eggs. I mean, five infertiles, but 17 bomb ass eggs. Oh yeah. my God. Okay. So but what, what's your total count right now with chondros? Like how many do you actually have right now? The babies included or adults? Let's just talk about adults. Like let's talk about the, the actual adults that you have five so you have five adults which is what five two adults. three females, females three females okay yeah all right i know it, it might it might seem like i have a lot but only no, no, no. no i mean the only reason why it would seem like you have a lot is because you're producing a lot it's a numbers yeah. game right like it's normally a numbers game but clearly with what you have is fucking meant for this game like you're breeding shit okay so we'll get into that right now so now with you getting the female right at what point did you say in your head like let me let me go ahead and breed these things or did you collect the other uh, uh other pair before doing that like when did you start breeding them actually it wasn't even then it was about a month after i got her she had already started eating she was great i'm like okay like maybe i can tackle something like i i really love these guys like i i genuinely do and maybe i can I, I can bring on a couple others. You know, you know when the addiction starts really kicking in, you're like, yeah, maybe another one. Another one. And back then, there was 
zero knowledge of like Nido, at least for me, like that it was it nobody really talked about it, nobody really really knew about it like that, you know, or took it seriously. And uh so it wasn't as big a deal like having a closed collection versus like bringing new things in. Uh yeah, anyway, a month afterwards I I I found an ad, I guess. And I I it was for two babies. It was like two of Chrono siblings and I contacted the guy who, who set me up with the breeder, <clears throat> which actually is who I consider my mentor. And he's a really good friend. And his name is Ed Bradley. It, anyway, yeah, I, I contacted him. We, we spoke. Uh, and long story short, it wasn't until after I got Kronos that I was like, no, I have to breed this. Like, it, And maybe uh, for those of you who don't know who Kronos is, he's, I guess, the male that he produced my first clutch and he's let's, a Mena and let's dip into it. Let's, let's, here, let's pull him up real quick. Yeah. I, have, I have your extra Instagram already pulled up. So, um, where, where's he at from? I'm at the bottom or I should I start from the top. Those are still all I produce. So keep going up. All right. So we'll grow up right there. Uh, right here. Uh, that one or the, yeah, that underneath that. There you go. Right here. Yeah. That's it. All right. Here he is. So yeah. this, this is the first snake you bought. No, no, this is not. The first snake I bought, I ended up selling. Actually. Okay. You know. when I, yeah, it was the year after that. I had bred him, but the uh, female passed away. And I'll, I can get into that too because that's also another example of tragedy, yeah. like and what to expect, not what to expect necessarily, but not to count your eggs before they hatch. Like, But yeah, this is uh, the second male I bought. So yeah, this is the... And this is from Ed, from Ed Bradley, right? Yeah, yeah, who bred and produced them. Okay. And how'd you meet Ed? Uh, one of his friends, his name is David, had posted up an ad, and I responded to it, and he said, I'll get you in touch with Ed. Like, all right, let me talk to Ed. Let me see how he uh, responds to that. And then pretty much he said, yeah, it's okay. He gave me his email. And we emailed back and forth, and it wasn't until, like, probably a long conversation had gone by that he had agreed to give me his number. Yeah. And then uh, it wasn't until a couple phone calls that he had agreed to sell me just the babies. And then it wasn't until, yeah, you, you get the idea. And then I guess we just spoke a little more. He, he just, he wanted to test me to really make sure like I knew what I was doing and what I was getting myself into because they, at the time that was the most expensive thing that I was going to buy. And uh, one thing led to another. He he entrusted me with his mail. Like I made wow. him a number. He said yes, and he told me he believes in me, and he took a chance on me, and that was that. Man, would that feel? I mean, because I'm coming from experience, and I've I've been told this since joining the the hobby, and I'm telling you, I'll take it to my grave. But what's it feel for you when someone says they believe in you and they hand you over something as dreamy as this? Like, do you recall that feeling? I like it was yesterday, man. You'll never it, forget that, huh? I'll, ne I'll never forget. Like it, it was just, it's not how, how often is it that somebody actually supports like exactly what you want to do. And even almost gives up something they love to, to see your goal come true. Like it, it just, or, you know, the thing that you really like, just genuinely like you fall in love with. And that, that for me was uh chronos. Like, when I saw him, like it was just unbelievable. It's or like an artificial looking blue with yellow and black, and it was just stunning. I didn't think a snake could look like that. And yeah, I guess him just telling me, like, yeah, like I I believe in you, like you can do this. It was it was like a shock. Like I don't even know if I believe in me anymore. Like when you say it like that, you're you like, know? oh fuck, the pressure's on now. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty amazing. You know, afterwards I even offered him a baby. Like I like, oh, for like sure. Right. Me too. Like, but he's not into that. It's pretty funny. He liked keeping cool. all of his stuff very pure. So in one way or another, he kind of told me like he's not into mutts. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> well, the, that's the funny thing, but. The thing is, Kronos himself, I don't want to call him a mutt necessarily, but he's not a purebred snake. So th this is the catch-22. Uh, right. Kronos is, yeah, Kronos' dam turned out to be a monoquari female, although it was sold to him as a womena. 
So even like up until after, even after I got 